good day to all of you. Welcome to our press conference with uh, Mr. Victor Ponta, the Prime Minister of Romania. Today we want to address some of the inaccuracies reported in the last week regarding the political developments in Romania. And we also would like to remind people what has been happening in Romania over the last few years. And of course, we would like to outline what will happen over the coming months, including the PES Congress, which will be held in Bucharest in September. And I personally want to show my support for Victor Ponta, because he is not just taking steps to rebuild the democratic fabric of the Romanian society, which was heavily fractured in the recent years, but also he is repairing the damage of the three years uh, which was made by the austerity-only policy, uh, very painful for the Romanian society, with the measures which were forcefully imposed on the people and which led to very serious social unrest and to very serious social co consequences, including the closure of one-third of the hospitals in the country, which is a terrible drama and one of the real problems for the people, not for the politicians. Uh, and uh, I'm very confident that Victor and uh, this Romanian government has a clear commitment to the highest democratic standards and it will be thoroughly vindicated by any EU Commission assessment. Because as you know, yesterday Prime Minister Ponta declared very clearly his personal commitment to the highest democratic standards and uh, if there would be any conclusions by the European Commission regarding some concerns even, he said that he would call the Parliament to act immediately. And this shows the very strong commitment and the openness of the Prime Minister in Romania. Uh, as already Hannes Svoboda, the leader of our S&D group in the European Parliament, said yesterday, we will always stand firm in supporting the respect for fundamental rights and the rule of law. And we will not tolerate any violation of European law. But let me make one thing crystal clear. This is also the deeply held belief of my friend Victor Ponta. And because uh, in the recent days there were uh, very strong wordings from the representatives of the European People's Party, I would uh, say that they were using language which was thuggish and tabloid and not based on real facts. And I can see quite a double standard in the behavior of the conservatives in the European Parliament and uh, by the EPP in many ways, at least by their representatives. Because I would like to make one clear comparison between Hungary and Romania. The Prime Minister of Hungary, Mr. Orban, changed the constitution fundamentally, which will affect the life of the Hungarians for decades maybe to come. And there were very serious concerns regarding the consequences without, by the way, any consultations with the citizens of Hungary. And on this issue, the EPP was completely silent, and I would say supportive to Mr. Orban understanding, as they said, to the reasons for these changes, which were affecting the very balance of powers, the functioning of the Hungarian state, the freedom of media, and many other fundamental issues. I would also like to remind you one fact which is easily forgotten and never mentioned. Uh, less than two years ago, in Bulgaria, my country, there was an impeachment procedure against the president of the country, which was initiated by the party, GERP, a member of the EPP. And it only missed four votes in the National Assembly to become a fact. The difference is that, unlike in Bulgaria, now uh, in Romania there will be a popular vote on the 29th of this month. And the people will have the possibility to say their opinion. And I think this is a very fundamental difference between the two cases which I mentioned and the silence and support of the EPP to the behavior of their member parties and to what is happening in Romania. I would say very clearly 
that this issue was exploited politically by the right wing and by the pro-austerity advocates. Because I believe that the real challenge and the real issue with which the government of Romania is dealing on a daily basis is the economic and the social situation in the country and the concerns of the people. We were speaking just with Prime Minister Ponta and he's doing his best really to ease the life of an average Romanian. And from this point of view, I welcome these efforts and I believe that the government will be very decisive in strengthening the economic performance and taking care of the people under this very serious crisis. I would like to underline also another element which is very easily forgotten. There was a pronouncement by the Constitutional Court regarding the impeachment procedures and other procedures made uh, in, the, in the Romanian Parliament, which is saying that they are completely legitimate according to the Constitution. Of course, an impeachment procedure is never a pleasant political process, especially for the one who is impeached. But this is part of a democracy. This is part of the democratic procedure. And what is the most important is that we shall all have the possibility to see in the next weeks and on the 29th of July what is the opinion of the people of Romania, which is the high expression of democracy, at least for me. If for some other peoples this is the other way around, well, it's their problem. Uh, finally, I would like to underline that the PES is delighted to have our Congress in Bucharest in the end of September. We believe that by then, many of the problems which uh, uh, we are discussing today will be behind in the past and that uh, the government of Romania and Victor Ponta will be doing a good job for the citizens of the country. Uh, this is what I wanted to say. We stand with Victor Ponta. We are confident that his actions will be vindicated by the European Commission. And I would like to repeat that he showed complete openness to the objective assessment of the European Commission. And we look forward to seeing him give us a traditional welcome in Bucharest in September. Victor. Certainly, I, I will. Good morning. I would like just to to begin with uh, a statement that maybe will repeat some of the things that I've already said yesterday, and then, of course, to answer to the questions. But I would like to stress once again that I immediately came to Brussels to meet the European Union officials, also the leaders of the political groups, leaders of the European parties I met Mr. Watson yesterday, I'm meeting right now uh, my family party uh, uh, leader, Mr. Stanishev. I'm going to meet the President of the European Council and the President of the Commission in order to say very clear that we are fully committed to respect all, all the European standards, the rule of law, the constitutional procedures in Romania, and that Romania is not going to be, in fact, a new case of uh, worrying and concern for the European partners. I may see the parallel made between Hungary and Romania, but I came here to prove that this parallel is not based on true facts and that our government and the majority decision is to fully commit with all the European standards and the assessments of the European partners. I would just present once again the three main points of our position, the three points that I will present in front of all the representatives that I'm going to meet, and the three points which are going to be the base of our, uh, of our position as a country as a government, as a majority. The first point is that we are now in a political internal crisis because of a failed cohabitation situation. 
President Basescu, he has been ruling our country for the last eight years. He lost the support of the people. He lost the support of the parliament in last April when his government uh, was changed by a non-confidence motion of the parliament. And he lost also the support of the government because a new government led by myself was voted by the parliament. Also on the 10th of June during an electoral processes, the huge support manifested by the Romanian voters for the new majority and the new alliance proved this. I have tried and uh, I've tr I did my best to be able to cohabitate with the, with the President Basescu. Unfortunately, unfortunately, and this is the second point, the strong agenda of change that the new majority has promised to the Romanian people and uh, has promised to implement this agenda, including financial stability, keeping all the obligation that Romania have with the IMF, European Commission and World Bank, but also taking important measures in economic and social grounds uh, to assure growth and to assure new jobs and a better social development for the population. This agenda sh cannot be implemented with a president which has blocked the laws adopted by the new majority and the decision made by the government. The third point is that this internal political fight over the agenda of the new majority and the president, which is not having any more the popular support, but it's trying still to block the implementation of this agenda. The third point and the most important one for our European partners was that all the political debate between the two parties is respecting the constitutional rules, procedures, and the rule of law. And Monday, the decisions of the Constitutional Court of Romania have ratified the suspension of the president by the parliament. And I should tell you once again that it was not the social, only the social democratic group in the parliament, because we don't have the majority. It was two thirds of the parliament voting in favor of the suspension. Also, the Constitutional Court have ratified the decision to have a popular referendum on the 29th and the Romanian population to vote in favor of a new agenda of reforms promoted by the new majority or in favor, of course, of the, of the president in charge, uh, Mr. Basescu. I came here to assure that all the decisions of the Constitutional Court are going to be fully respected by the new majority and by the government. And if, and I hope this is a very clear difference of any other case, previous case of other countries, if the European Commission will assess any needed change in our uh, legislation or our uh, decisions. I am committed to promote these changes and to fulfill all the requirements of uh, European standards and our European partners. I care a lot about the, the image of Romania as a democratic, as a democracy solving its internal political uh, debates through a political and a popular vote. I'm going to, to, to assure that the economic, financial and social stability also based on the legitimacy given by the, by the population, it's going to be kept in Romania. And uh, I came here once again to assure that telling our part of the story and putting on the table evidence and facts that will, uh, that will solve most part of the worries which have been legitimately expressed by our colleagues. 
Thank you all for coming.